Hi, so today we're gonna start uh, talking about how to classify and diagnose anemia. And to start off, we're gonna first look at the parameters that you see on a complete blood count that would give you red flags on maybe this patient is already anemic or not. So first, of course, the first thing that you look at is the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. So hemoglobin I've talked about plenty of times in previous videos, but the hematocrit is the packed cell volume. And you get that value by centrifuging a certain amount of blood in a capillary tube or um, through your analyzers, and it'll give you that percentage of packed cell volume on that patient. So it gives you a percentage value. So for normal hematocrit for an adult male, it should linger at around 47% plus minus 5%. And for women, it's 42% plus 5 minus 5% would be the range. So <clears throat> what's the relationship between hemoglobin and hematocrit? If you have a hemoglobin value of 15, let's say 15, you want your hematocrit to be times three of that value. So it's one is to three. So if you have 15 for hemoglobin, you multiply that by three, which is 45%. That should be the rough estimate of where your hematocrit should be. That's the ideal picture. So if something's wrong and they're not um, obeying the rule of three, there might be something wrong with the patient's blood. So for hemoglobin, you want your hemoglobin values to linger around 14 to 18 grams per deciliter for males. For females, it's 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. And for infants, for babies, it's 14 to 22 grams per deciliter. Okay, so now let's move on to RBC indices. What are the RBC indices? So RBC indices are the mean corpuscular volume, MCV, the mean cell hemoglobin, MCH, and the mean cell hemoglobin concentration, or MCHC. So let's start with the MCV. The MCV can be calculated by dividing your hematocrit by your RBCs. Or you can have an analyzer take that value for you. And the normal range for MCV is between 80 to 100 femtoliters. So if you have less than that, that means your RBC size are smaller. They're like microcytic. They're smaller than the average. If they're within, then they're great. But if they're more than 100 femtoliters, then they are macrocytic. They're big RBCs. Next, we have the MCH, which is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and the MCHC, which is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. So these two are pretty much just telling you how much hemoglobin there is in the red blood cells. But there is a difference in how they are calculated, and I think one is a better parameter than the other. MCH is calculated by dividing your hemoglobin with your RBCs, and that's your MCH. So that's the average amount of hemoglobin you have basing off of your RBC count. Whereas the MCHC is dividing the hemoglobin with the hematocrit, which is the percentage of your packed cell volume. So the reason why MCHC is a more reliable calculation than the MCH when it comes to the hemoglobin content of RBCs. For MCHC, it gives you a bigger picture because it takes into account how big your RBCs are because it's taking the hematocrit parameter on the calculation of MCHC, right? So it's hemoglobin divided by hematocrit and hematocrit is the packed cell volume. volume. So it takes into account how big or small your RBCs are. Whereas for the MCH, you only calculate it through the average amount of hemoglobin you have per RBCs. It doesn't matter if they're big or small. So it, MCHC gives you a better picture overall of where um, your patient is at. So let's go into the calculation part of it. So we're gonna try and memorize the formula for MCH and MCHC. So this is why I made this video is because I do have a shortcut for <laughs> memorizing 
this. It's basically a triangle and if you look at it, there is the hemoglobin up top and then the RBC and the matricrit in the bottom. And if you look at the left side of the triangle, you have the MCH parameter. So the way you see it is you divide hemoglobin divided by RBC times 10 equals the MCH. And then for the other side, we have the MCHC equals the hemoglobin divided by the hematocrit times 100. So this is an easy way of remembering the formula for MCH and MCHC. But of course, given that all the given values on the problem are on their standard measurement, like Which sometimes they trick you, they give you a different unit of measure for these things. So watch out for that. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. I have this triangle with me when I took the ASCP so that it was easier for me to remember it and it was easy to apply. So for normal ranges, MCH is between 27 to 31 picograms PG and MCHC is between 32 to 36 percent. So what do you look out for for the MCHC? When you see the MCHC and it's less than 32 percent, which is the normal range, so if it's less than 32 percent, your cells might be hypochromic. So you check the peripheral blood smear and look at the central pallor. So if the central pallor, you know how it's a donut, right? So the donut should be like small, like the, the circle in the middle should be small. But if it's really big, if it's almost as big as the RBC, like there's not a lot of hemoglobin in there, then your cells are hypochromic. So lastly, let's talk about the RDW, which is a value given to you by the analyzer. It's not a calculated value. It's, it's measured by the analyzer. So what does that tell you? RDW is the, is the gauge on size variation of your RBCs. There can be small, small microcytic RBCs there, and then there's like ovalocytes, big ones. So the amount of variation, if there's a lot of like variation in size, you have a lot of small, small, small and big, big, big cells, the value becomes abnormal. So what's the normal range for RDW? Okay, so the reference range for RDW range is between 11.5 to 14.5%. So when the RBCs are unequal in size or the RDW is higher than 14.5%, this is also known as anisocytosis okay so now you have all these values and you're like so what do I do next what's the big picture here so now you know what's abnormal and not so you look at the hemoglobin hematocrit if the patient's like oh shoot this person doesn't have you know hemoglobin like they're anemic based off of, basing off of the hemoglobin and the hematocrit now you look at the RBC indices so is it normocytic normochromic wherein the MCV is in normal range and the MCHC is in normal range but they're anemic so what's with them it could be a chronic renal disease a bone marrow failure hemolytic anemia leukemia or metastatic malignancy so now let's look at what if the MCV is greater than 100 so now your cells are macrocytic they're big they're bigger than usual and then the MCHC hemoglobin content is still normal. So macrocytic normochromic anemia, what are those? Those include megaloblastic anemia. And it could also be non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia, such as what happens in liver disease and myelodysplasia. Third scenario, what if your MCV is less than normal, so less than 80, so you have microcytic cells they're small and they're hypochromic they're less than 32 for the mchc what's happening you can have iron deficiency anemia thalassemia sideroblastic anemia lead poisoning so it's just you know you need further diagnosis to really narrow down what's going on because you have microcytic hypochromic anemia and there's a lot of causes to that and that's pretty much it we've reached the end of our rbc um, in this lecture. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. If you liked my content, please do like and subscribe and I hope I made it easier for you to understand these parameters and hopefully it helps you study for hematology. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye!